How do I age well? It's something I often ponder on. My name's Rosaria Barreto, and I want to find out what it takes to live a healthy and happy life as we age. I'm a clinical exercise specialist, and for the past five years, I've worked with nearly a thousand older adults, and as a result, have had the chance to talk to a diverse range of happy and healthy and not so happy and healthy people in their 70s, 80s and 90s. And I want to know what it takes to be able to look back and confidently say, mm, I lived an amazing life. Why not join me in this exploration on what it takes to live happily and healthily and learn how to age well? So today we're going to be talking about the molecular impact of exercise and when we're able to understand that we can help motivate ourselves to exercise more but also I feel like when you have a deeper understanding of the impact of exercise you are more driven to implement it into your day-to-day life so as you know this podcast is all about how we age well and exercise plays a major role in the way that we age and it can determine whether you age well whether you age poorly or whether you live a shorter life ultimately um, and it can definitely affect the quality of your life so I thought it might be really good to do this short educational episode on the molecular impact on aging um this is a short one probably one of my most shorter ones shorter episodes so i hope that it gives you a boost of knowledge and a way to refer back to why you're doing exercise and and really understanding how it's going to help you personally age and improve the quality of your life in later life So when you imagine the human body as a bustling city where every cell, gene and molecule plays a role in keeping everything running smoothly. And as we age, this city begins to face wear and tear. But exercise acts like a master engineer, maintaining and even revitalizing our systems at the most fundamental levels. So let's enter a journey through the molecular impact of exercise on the aging body and we're going to be focusing on groundbreaking research from other leading institutions including Stanford Medicine. So this study, this amazing study done by Stanford Medicine, um, delved into how exercise promotes overall health, particularly in the brain. So by understanding how health affects various organs at molecular level, healthcare providers are able to tailor exercise recommendations more effectively. And this knowledge could also lead to the development of drug therapies and mimic the benefits of exercise for those unable to engage in physical activity. Now, I am a big believer in everybody can exercise, it just depends on how you exercise. So I think maybe there's something here that demonstrates the way as a society we approach exercise from just trying to find a substitute because we just cannot find the motivation or the time to do it i don't think there will ever be a drug that can mimic the impact of exercise just because of how powerful it is and how necessary it is so the stanford study published in Nature, involved 10,000 measurements across almost 20 types of tissues to examine the impact of eight weeks of endurance exercise in lab rats trained to run on tiny treadmills. And the findings were outstanding, revealing significant effects on the immune system, stress response, energy production and metabolism. The research identified vital connections between exercise and molecules and genes involved in numerous human diseases and tissue recovery. And our body is massively made up of tissue. And if exercise is impacting the way in which our tissues develop, adapt, react, then it's just another reason why we need to be looking into exercise research and the impact that this has on long-term health conditions. So training 
upregulated genes in the mitochondria of skeletal muscle that are typically downregulated in individuals with type 2 diabetes. So this suggests that the endurance training could improve muscular function in diabetes. Similarly, the study showed that exercise upregulated genes in the mitochondria of the liver, which are downregulated in people with cirrhosis, indicating potential benefits for liver health. And moreover, the study explored sex differences in how male and female rats' tissues responded to exercise. So the male rats lost about 5% of their body fat, whilst female rats maintained their initial fat percentage preventing the gain observed in sedentary females. This highlights how biological sex can influence the physiological response to exercise. And I do think that there needs to be considerations made, especially when devising exercise programs, looking into elite sport, but also just looking into day-to-day activity and how that's going to impact an individual's long-term health and Body weight, body weight, and body fat. So, another fascinating discovery came from researchers at the University of Queensland in Australia, published in Aging Cell, and they demonstrated how exercise might deter or decelerate cognitive decline as individuals age. So, by examining the gene expression in individuals' brain cells of mice, they found that exercise profoundly influences gene expression in micro. I can never say some of these signs of it was microglia, microglia, microglia. The immune cells supporting brain function in the in the nervous system. So exercise reverted the gene expression patterns of aged microglia to those seen in in younger microglia, and this suggested a rejuvenating effect on the brain's immune cells. So. This impact is crucial, not just for clearing cellular debris, but also for supporting the birth of new neurons in the hippocampus. And that basically means um, that it supports the um, kind of the, the reproduction or the recreation of vital areas of the brain that impact memory, learning and emotion. And this just really underscores that the importance of exercise and maintaining brain health, particularly as we age. So if you consider things like dementia and other mental health diseases that are more prominent in later life than older than younger life, um, there are, it, it basically suggests that we can impact or control the likelihood of developing dementia, maybe not kind of completely prevent it from occurring, but we can slow down the deterioration of the brain. So Ryan Glatt, a senior brain health coach at Pacific Neuroscience Institute, emphasizes that exercise enhances synaptic plasticity and blood flow whilst reducing inflammation and increasing the expression of neurotrophic factors like BDNF. And these basically um, impact or the effects can synergistically improve memory, memory learning and overall brain health. So in in essence, to kind of summarise these main areas, exercise influences the gene expression related to brain plasticity, inflammation and metabolism, whilst also enhancing mitochondrial function and modulating immune responses. So if we just focus on those for now, we've covered how exercise impacts the brain, how it impacts tissue, which is pretty much like what everything is made up of, and it's also impacting immunity. Additionally, we've also got this hormonal impact. So hormonal changes due to physical activity can contribute to improved mood and reduce stress, and that can create a holistic benefit that supports both mental and physical well-being. And I'm a huge believer and thinker when it comes to how mental health can control the quality of our life you know if you're severely depressed the last thing you're going to want to do is exercise and if you're not exercising your mental health is going to deteriorate your physical health is going to deteriorate and it is just a constant cycle of negative reinforcement and 
if we're not controlling those mental health thought patterns, for example, it could be just, if we look at like surface level stress, exercise isn't going to be prioritized and you're not able to improve your memory, improve your alertness or maintain your alertness. You develop brain fog, you develop hormonal changes that impact your quality of thinking. So moving on from kind of the whole internal um elements of that what i read recently was around how muscle can be a way of measuring your aging process so for example if you're looking at somebody's muscle mass and let's say you have somebody with very very little muscle mass and you have somebody with much, much more muscle mass, and they're both 70 years old. The person with more muscle mass is is highly, highly likely to show signs of better quality of life, better health outcomes, better mental health, better ability to regulate mood, better ability to do things without relying on other people, so more independence compared to somebody who has very, very low muscle mass, develops long-term health conditions, like um, it could be osteoarthritis, but you've also got things like edema, which is going to impact standing ability and walking ability. And as a result of that, you've got reduced quality of life, relying on other people to be able to care for you, lack of independence. Um, and, And those two things, I think, we fundamentally understand the whole or the holistic impact of exercise, we can really start to reconnect and re-engage our brain in why it's important, why we need to do it. And instead of snoozing your alarm in the morning or uh, making an excuse not to go in the afternoon or the evening, is is actually going, no, I don't want to have to rely on somebody looking after me when I'm 70 or 80. I want to be able to do things for myself. I want to be able to look after my grandchildren. Um, I want to be able to travel the world. I want to be able to go to the shops and not have to wait for somebody to come and pick me up and drop me off. You know, we take things for granted and exercise, in my opinion, is up there with top three most important things that anybody should be doing before a career, before um, kind of financial well-being. If you have, your health is everything. And fundamentally, if you're not doing anything to to look after your health, then your quality of life is just going to be poop. And I, it's really hard to have that conversation with somebody who doesn't witness the impact of lack of exercise on a day-to-day basis. I see it every single day, every single week, the impact that sedentary living has had on people's lives. And it is it's so so sad and it it does motivate me personally to be able to say no this is why I'm doing my exercise I think moving away from the whole exercise for aesthetics is becoming so much more important to people especially younger generations um from what I can see and I just want this episode to really encourage you to start prioritizing exercise making sure you understand the real importance the scientific importance of exercise not just i need to lose weight i need to i need to encourage blood flow okay but why do we need to encourage blood flow because we need to be able to optimize our tissues because we need to be able to kind of support hormone health and um we need to increase the health of the mitochondria you know like all of those things from a deep scientific level will start to retrain your approach to exercise. So I hope that you found that beneficial. Um, It's a very, very short overview of the impact of exercise from a molecular level, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. My name's Rosaria Barreto, and thank you so much for listening to How to Age Well. If you've enjoyed the podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to leave a review. Your feedback means so much and helps others to find out about how to age well.